Welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Welcome back to a brand new video. Arsenal beaten FC Zurich two goals to one. We are back to winning ways. That is very, very important. And we are also back in Europe with a win. Yeah, it's not the kind of win you would have wanted. It's not the kind of win I wanted because I wanted Arsenal to win 4-1, 5-0. And what a horrific prediction i had Mikel Arteta certainly was not really happy with that result i looked at him when he was walking away from that you know touch line he wasn't so happy with the, uh, with the score line but that will actually not matter we have beaten fc zurich um in switzerland in our opening game of the europa league group stages two goals to one and maquinos has been an absolute star now look i think we all undermined him when we signed him from palmarius in um uh, in uh, in the summer, no one actually gave him a lot of attention. Um, we thought he was actually going to be more involved with the under twenty threes um, than with this Arsenal, you know, first team squad. But that kind of performance actually guarantees him another start at least uh, in the Europa League and also another uh, you know match day squad in the UFO, in, in the you know in the Premier League. Beautiful performance from McQueenos. So this is where we get into our. Man of the match selection. I've gone with four candidates in this game, but to be honest, if I'm honest, I would have gone with uh, only two candidates. But I'm gonna go with four because that is what we always do on the channel. I've gone with McQuinos, had a very, very good game, a goal, and an assist. And I thought, um, at his age 19, his he, you know, it is his debut to have the kind of courage to first and foremost get in those uh, dangerous areas make those very dangerous runs and then score but also um be able to create an impact when it was one one that you needed someone to step up arsenal were really passive and very very predictable and that's why fc zurich were actually uh bloss you know blocking all the passing channels you needed someone to step up you needed someone to do something different and that is what Mc mcquinas exactly did a very wonderful ball to the head of edin ketia and it was 2-1. Now, the second player is Edin Ketty, of course. Did set up McQuinos. Now, we don't talk about uh, uh, Edin Ketty enough. But I think he's really improved under Mikel Arteta. Did set up McQuinos, like I said, for the first goal. Beautiful, well-weighted uh, well, well -weighted ball. Because I think he just waits a fraction of a second. Waits for McQuinos to uh, arrive. And as McQuinos arrives, he just sets in the ball. And it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, you know, beautiful ball. Then, um, you know, you have, you know, of course, Edin Ketia causing the penalty on the other side as we were, you know, on the brink of, of our time. But then changing the odds as well. A very, very beautiful header uh, assisted by McQuinos. So I thought, I mean, the, I don't think Edin Ketia really played very, very well. But I'm going to say he deserves to be, you know, mentioned as man of the match, as a contender. But my real man of the match, if we don't go with um, Kieran Tierney, and McQuinos is Kieran Tierney. Now, I thought Kieran Tierney, uh, sorry, not, sorry, Edin Ketia and McQuinos is Kieran Tierney. I thought Kieran Tierney had a very, very good game. And today is the first time I've seen him play in that Alexander Zichenko role. Now, many of you could have probably have not seen uh, what Michelata tried to do with, uh, with Eddie. And I'm going to try to explain that in a, in a uh, with, sorry, with, 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 with Tierney. I'm going to try to explain that later in the video. But you literally had, you know, Tierney play a free role. We've never seen him play that. He played in the center of the midfield. He played in the middle of the park. He had a lot of space. He had a lot of time to do whatever he wanted. And I thought it was so genius, so genius from Mikel Arteta just to uh, allow Kieran Tierney take up that role, absorb that role uh, Alexander Zichenko plays so that when you lose Alexander Zichenko, Kieran Tierney doesn't look so uh, new to the role. And the reason why he's actually not performing very well is because he's no longer playing as a traditional fullback. He's now playing as an inverted fullback. He, but he had a very, very good game. I thought he had more touches on the ball than anyone. I thought he had, you know, very, very decent touches in the middle of the pack as well. And number four, I thought Martinelli and Xhaka had really, had really had a good game. So let's go with Xhaka. I thought Xhaka had a slightly better game, uh, better game than that of Gabriel Martinelli. Martinelli did run about, had um, uh, a few runs of the shoulder, but I really don't think he impacted the game as much as uh, uh, Xhaka. And because Xhaka had a very good game with Lokonga, we kept the ball better. 
we we dominate the, we dominated the the bigger part of the ball although chance creation is something we actually did do so Costa's man of the match is Karantini but in the comment section let's go with your uh, man of the match let us know uh, who was your man of the match was it Edin Ketia was it Marquinhos was it uh, you know was it uh, Granny Jaka or was it Karantini uh, as well so look two one I thought. Now, let's start off with the lineup because I thought uh, the rotation was absolutely needed. If you look at how uh, you know, Mikel Atta decided to uh, line up a 3 4 3 formation with uh, Fabio Vieira slightly pulling out of uh, the top three to become a number 10. And he did actually have a very, very good game, but I like the way we started out. So that is the lineup. Uh, 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 Hitana or Matana in goal. Uh, not a very, very not a very good performance, honestly. But I thought there was nothing much to trouble him. Uh, the back three, Gabriel Magales, Rob Holding, um, and, and Tomiyasu did well. Anything that was thrown on their way, uh, they actually um, they actually uh, dealt with it very, very well. In the midfield, Jaka Lokonga, um, and then uh, Kirantiani as well, part of the midfield. Uh, and I think he really, really had a very, very good game. And then Marquinhos, um, I, I thought they had a very, very good game as well. Then Fabio Vieira up top. Uh, Edin Ketia up top and um, and Gabriel Martinelli up top as well. So, look, to be honest, that performance there lacked a couple of things, right? Yes, it's a win. We will take it. It's a win that means Arsenal back to winning ways. It's, um, it's a win uh, that means Arsenal back to uh, on Europe with a win. But I thought it lacked a couple of things. Now, let's first talk about putting games to bed because this is a problem we've not talked about on this channel this whole season. Arsenal have dominated almost 75%, um, you know, with 75% with, with ball position in many of the games we have played this season. That starts from Crystal Palace, Man United. Um, I don't remember the other games we played in the Premier League because we won all of them and it really doesn't matter. But this game, we had position up to 85%. 85%. It's so similar to what we had against Man United. We had the better share of the ball, but we didn't create the chances. And it happened. Uh, it actually manifested uh, in this game as well. And I thought we, we need to talk about it because this is Europa League. So no one is going to say because you're being sarcastic or what. Let's talk about it. Arsenal need to start barring games. Arsenal need to start um, you know, putting games to bed as soon as possible when we have the chances. For example, in the first half, there is no reason, there is no excuse, there is no justification that Arsenal finish off the first half 1-0 with FC Zurich. They literally had one chance on goal, and that was the penalty kick. They literally didn't have anything to offer, both in the first half and in the second half, and they had a goal. This is what I've already, I've already talked about. How do you lose to Man United, uh, yet United only had three chances on target, yet you know, United had um, only 25% uh, share of the ball. How do you lose to them? The question and the point is that we are not barring games just like we should, right? This is not the most positive reaction, I'm sorry, but we need to talk about this. When you're having 85% ball position, when you're having 90% ball position, when you're having, well, I don't care. Charlie Hodry puts it very clearly uh, in his reaction to the Manchester United defeat. They had the ball, Arsenal, but possession doesn't win games, right? And that is why it is so hard. The picture of the Man United game is very, very blurry. It looks like Man United were, were the better side. It looks like Man United had a better game because they had a better game plan. I, I am not against Mikel Arteta's game plan because it is one that really freezes the opponent and as a person who supports Spain a lot, I just love it. I just love it when you when, when you freeze your opponents. You can create a lot of passing lanes. Uh, you can work the channels. You can do a lot of that work. But the final third, work is lacking. Edin Ketia, for Christ's sake, was our striker. But how many chances did Edin Ketia get in that game? To be honest, I'm going to say this. Edin Ketia did not get any decent chances, both in the first half, and in the second half, he didn't get any chances. And it is very similar to the situation with uh, Gabriel Jesus against Man United. No chances created for our number nine. But we have a Fabio Vieira on the pitch. And we also have um, uh, a Karantiani. We are having a right back. 
We are having fullbacks. We are having a Martin Odegaard as a number 10. We need to start creating chances, more chances. We need to start in scoring more goals. We need to start putting games to bed. If you still remember my prediction, it is nothing. And I say this, there is no excuse for us not winning this game with a three-goal margin. And the fact that we don't surprises me, amuses me, baffles me. I, I don't understand why we are not scoring goals. We are dominating games. We are dominating teams because that would have been our problem. That because we're still learning the system, it is hard for us to dominate games. No, we are dominating games. But why aren't we breaking teams down? We need to start doing that, um, and we need to start, you know, barring games very, very early. But I thought uh, the performance, it was so comfortable. As an Arsenal fan, it's one of those games where I sit uh, on my table, and I'm like, a goal is coming, and it came. Uh, yes, they've equalized, but another goal is coming, uh, and it came. But it is so comfortable, but it doesn't give you the satisfaction you have as a Manchester City fan, as a Barcelona fan. And the reason is... They create more chances. I look at... I love Barcelona and I watch a lot of Barcelona games and I support Barcelona. I look at I, I look at Pedri. I look at Gavi. I look at the likes of Ousmane Dembele. I look at the likes of uh, Robert Lewandowski. And the way they create chances and the way they work those channels, we need to do that, right? If we want, if we want to win the, the top trophies, if we want to, uh, you know, make statements, we need to start early um, and putting games to bed is something that we need to do. So we are back to winning ways. I thought Marquinhos needs a mention. Um, and I've talked about him, had a very, very good game. 19 years of age, has just come into, um, you know, Europe, is, is, has, uh, has just come into the UK, and what an impact he's already creating. Now, don't get me wrong, I think Arsenal got it wrong, completely wrong, uh, by not getting in a new winger in the summer. We got it wrong by not getting in a new uh, midfielder in the summer. But that is something that we have to focus on in January. That is something that uh, we cannot talk about right now here. It's, uh, it's absolutely useless. So for Saka to get some bed rest, is it bed rest? Okay, uh, some, some, some minutes off to you know, just cool his legs, Marquinhos is the guy. Marquinhos is the boy. Now, he's a bowler. I like bowlers. I like Brazilian bowlers. He's, one thing I've loved about him is the confidence. I think it just comes with, it just comes with the ability, uh, sorry, with, 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 with being Brazilian. He's so confident. He, he, he's not afraid of taking on players. He's not afraid um, of, of entering into challenges. And when, 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 when he gets the ball, he's so clever. He understands when to make a run, when to drive into traffic, and even when to, you know, like, just, 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 just chill um, and pass the ball back and wait for support. And, you know, why I think it's very fit for that Saka role, think about Saka and what he's done at that age for Arsenal. There is no reason as to why McQuinos can't do that. There is no reason as to why we've given Saka and Martinelli the opportunity to blossom at, at, 20, at 19, 20, 21, and we don't give it to McQuinos. Had a very fantastic debut. He cried. He cried when he scored his first goal for Arsenal. And for me, as a Brazilian player... You're going to score. You don't need to cry because you're going to score many goals for Arsenal. You're going to create many chances for this club. And you're going to be a very important player. If they've not given him man of, ma man of the match, uh, I'm currently looking at the Man United game here. So uh, I've, I've, I've switched away from the Arsenal, uh, the Arsenal after event. But if, 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 the, if they've not given, them, given him man of the match, they're absolutely sick. That is a man of the match performance. Score, create one. Win the game for your team. I'm absolutely very, very, uh, you know, happy for McQueenus, but also glad that we have, you know, we have such players at at that age. The mentality, right? The, you know, the, the the ability to keep on going, uh, the zeal to just keep on pushing and pushing uh, for things to happen. Had a very, very good game, honestly. Had a very, very good game. Now let's talk about Fabio Vieira. He played as a number ten today, and. Let me say, guys, let me say this, guys. Number 10 for Fabio Vieira is actually not going to work. Number 10 for Fabio Vieira is not going to work. So, this is the reason. I think Fabio Vieira is not a traditional number 10. His passing is late. Did you see the pass that he uh, lays off for Edin Ketia? Just allows Edin Ketia to run. The, the weight on the pass, the, the intelligence... 
to make that pass and also uh you know the eye the vision so he's one player that we know in this Arsenal heart you know Arsenal side he has the vision he has the ability he has everything a complete midfielder has but for me he's either a Bernardo Silva or a Kevin De Bruyne prototype he's not a James Madison he's not that kind of player I don't think he's that kind of player. I think he wants to be more of a Luka Modric kind of guy. Love, loves to have his space. Loves to have um, that freedom to roam around the pitch. And at times, with um, Mikel Arteta and Pep Guardiola, you might not have that. Because, you know, that role to roam around everywhere has already been given, given to Kieran Tierney and Alexander Zichenko. We'll talk about Kieran Tierney in a minute. But I think Fabio Vieira, the role... That he has to play for Arsenal, very similar to what Martin Odegaard is doing, but quite very different. If you've seen how Emil Smith Rowe plays for Arsenal, that is what Fabio Vieira wants. Allow him a route, allow the pitch, allow him, you know, get on the ball, drive at defenses, you know, allow him have that you know, that time on the ball to pick out a splitting pass. Didn't have a very good game, but I thought the way we used him also is lacking now i don't want to become a fabio Vieira uh, attorney and lawyer i'll stop it at that but i think the uh, the typical number 10 for fabio Vieira, just like it doesn't work for martin odegaard um it won't work for fabio Vieira. D just don't limit them you know into that circle just allow them play um in those pockets of space that are left by jaka that are left by uh, Gabriel that, uh, that are left by Saka, allow them to create the superiorities, allow them to create the uh, overloads in midfield. Don't, I, I think, don't restrict them to being uh, the traditional number 10. It doesn't actually work hard. So, um, but I thought Kerentini, on the other hand, uh, you know, had a better game than anyone on the pitch. Kerentini, this is the first game I'm saying this. I've been impressed. I've been impressed. I, I've been impressed. And the reason I was not impressed with Quarantine and I didn't understand this right from the start is Mikel Arteta set a system and has set a way of play. He's told them, you're playing, a, you know, a, you're playing three at the back. So there would be, there would be fourth defender, uh, uh, the left back, who is either Quarantine or Alexander Zichenko, plays as an inverted fullback. So he plays as part of the midfield. So we literally are playing a 3-4-3 three, three formation, or at times a 3-5-2, uh, or anything, right? So, Karantian actually didn't play well uh, in the first two opportunities he's been given this season because he's not used to that. Because you, you know, if, if you look at Karantian today, much of the work he's done has been part of the midfield. Winning the ball back as quickly as possible. And, 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 and the reason there, lads, is because Xhaka has taken up a higher advanced role so if jaka is high up the pitch is um he's always finding himself in the penalt area just like Ike Gundogan. you need to have another player replacing jaka in midfield uh, making sure that there is there is enough cover in midfield and that is what um Karantiani has done i think he's won more dwells i think he's won the ball back today more than anyone i think he lacks that brilliance when it comes to you know splitting passes I think you know he lacks that kind of uh, he lacks that kind of brilliance. But apart from that, I thought he was alright. Yeah, I thought he was really, really alright. So that is my reaction to Arsenal two Zurich one. Next up is um, Everton at the Emirates Stadium uh, this weekend. We need to win that one to get back to winning ways to uh, 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 to uh, in the Premier League. Of course, it means if we win that game, we will stay on top of the table as Manchester City take on Tottenham Hotspur. It's a very big opportunity for us not to um, widen the gap on either Manchester City or Spurs. I don't like, I really don't like Spurs. I don't, I really don't like Manchester City. But I would say I'll pray both of them drop points uh, over the weekend. Everton is the next stop. Every player, I, I don't expect more injuries. Every player today has, you know, just had uh, a few minutes to warm up. The rotation was absolutely spot on. Mikel Arteta in my player ratings, we'll talk about him. But I thought this is a game where you come to dominate events, pick up three points and walk away. He's just done that. An absolutely magnificent performance. So Arsenal, um, Arsenal 2, Zurich 1 away from home. They will come to the Emirates Stadium in the second leg and that should be even an easier tie. Follow me on Instagram, Kosi underscore 19.
Twitter, Kossi Arsenal, and I will speak to you very, very soon. Be sure to subscribe and hit the like button.